Okay, today we're going to be talking about using PCBWay to do some CNC machining. I wanted to find out how their service uh, would work, how well it would work, the quality that they'd be able to do, and pricing, delivery. And I thought I'd go through that whole thing, so if any of you guys want to investigate it, you'll know exactly how to put the order in and do all that kind of stuff. Now, <clears throat> I won't go too much into this. This is a resin printed one, whereas this is the aluminum CNC one made. But this was just to prove that the files that I had made, in my case I used the free version of Design Spark Mechanical. Like all of the uh, free CAD things out there, there's usually different tiers you can get into. You're free and then usually at least two different paid layers. In the case of uh, Design Spark Mechanical, the only real problem if you're going to do CNC work is the free version won't let you save your final thing that you've designed as a step file or any other file that a uh, CNC machine factories need. You can save it as an STL, which is what I normally do all my work in because I'm 3D printing. And of course you can save it in the proprietary Design Spark Mechanical file. So the first thing I had to do since I used Design Spark Mechanical and I didn't want to pay to uh, move up a tier so that I could just save this as a, a step file, which is a preferred uh, file format for sharing with all the different CNC people out there. See, all the CNC people don't use the same type file. There's, there's a handful of different files, and I'm going to show you all those too. But before we get too far astray, I got online and I found that there was a place it says convert STL to step file for be online. Well, actually, this a uh, <clears throat> convert place I found. If you get up and go through the different models and free tools and stuff like that, they'll convert just about any kind of file into any kind of file. Now, here's where you would bring the file in, and just some examples of different things that they can convert. The only problem that I had. Because this initial design wasn't really the final design that I wanted. This is just where I started, and then I was going to refine it to uh, having rounded edges and a little bit thicker fins, a few little little odds and end changes like that. This one is an STL file that I could convert to a step file. It did it, no problem. And this is the file that I sent to uh, PCB way to work with, and they did a perfect job on it. This one from <laughs> Design Spark Mechanical, I guess because it gets more complex when you add the curved sides to everything, would crash this thing every time. I was never able to convert the STL to a step, so the only way I could actually ever um, get this thing that I designed in Design Spark Mechanical made on a CNC machine is if I paid them the extra money to move up one tier and I guess then that would turn on the option where you can save as a step file. But I thought I'd tell you about this just in case you guys need to convert anything. You can do a search online. You'll find there are actually a couple places that do it. This particular one, www.3dpea.com for whatever it's worth. Okay. So now assuming you've got a step file and you want to have PCBWay give you a quote on doing CNC machining on that, I would suggest when you're on the home page here, just go to this part here that says CNC machining, click on that. And at this point, it's going to tell you the different types of files that they will accept. Like I say, everyone takes different ones, but you'll notice that one of the first ones that's written there is the step, the STEP or the shorter version, STP. And another very popular one that's used just about everywhere is IGES. Anyway, they show them there. And the first thing you want to do is to bring that up. And I think I've got, yep, here we go. This is the file that they actually made for me. So let's just go ahead and bring that in there. That's going to take a little bit of while to load. So we're going to go ahead and talk while that's loading. Once it loads, you're going to put in your quantity, and maybe we can even do that now while we're waiting. 
let's just say quantity one. When you scroll down, you can select different materials, aluminum, stainless, brass, copper, tool steel, polycarbonate, just, just about anything you can name. In this case, I want aluminum. I'm just going to let it default to this first aluminum. Once this has the uh, image in there and it starts giving you some prices over here, these prices actually have no meaning whatsoever. Once you submit what you want to do for their engineers, an actual human being to look it over, you won't even have any idea what the price is going to be. I'm just saying that number is going to be wrong. But the number will do one thing, and that's once it's finished loading the whole thing here and, and came up with the bogus number, it's for reference only, as they call it. It, it serves one purpose, because if you uh, go through different things, like if you hit different materials, you can see whether the price goes up or the price goes down. That part will probably stay the same. So it could help you uh, pick a material, or pick a different aluminum, or pick a different finish, for example. Now, down here on surface finishes, there's, it says there's 25 options, so we can click on that. I don't know if it's going to show us all that until it's done loading everything up there, but the standard mill, that's, that's what I went with because it was the least expensive. It's just right off the milling machine. Looks quite nice, but it's not polished. I mean, you can polish aluminum until it looks like chrome. They'll do anodized. If you click in there, then there's different anodized colors. You got a color chart here, and they can do anodized, they can do brushed, you know, brushed metal, uh, bead blast, so it's been through a real fine grit uh, sandblasting type thing. They'll do all kinds of different spray painting. You can do custom colors. If you have your Pantone book, you can select a particular Pantone color. Powder coat, very durable. Spray plating, I guess that might be one way to make it look uh, nickel plated or chromed. I haven't investigated that price wise. It might be interesting to find out. Detail sanding, a thousand up to a thousand grit sanding. So you can go through all kinds of different things there on the finish. Okay, how far is it up? It's 86%, 87%. It's almost done loading. So you can select your different finishes there. You're probably not going to want to do any of these things. If you need to tap a thread, then you can say yes. It's going to cost you more to have them do a hole and, and tap threads. Something you can always do at home, but if you don't want to, you can pay them to do it. You can go down through all these things. You're probably not going to want to pay for any of those functions. But uh, down here you have your... Basically, they need to say what the part's going to be used for. And what I normally select here is I'm going to say it's DIY entertainment. And once you select that, in my case, it's almost always a robot part, so somewhere down in here, robot components. Then I would click on that. So it's just a robot part, robot component. Okay, it's loaded. There's a picture of the part. We've seen it. We know that that's it. So it's initially saying, because I selected one, that it's probably going to be $42.66. The only way you can find out for sure what the actual price is going to be like I said, it's good for, for trying different things. For example, if it was made in stainless, I keep getting ahead of myself, well now it's jumped up to 67 something. Or if it was made in brass, $192. It's not cheap. You gotta remember, this is CNC uh, machining, which means they start with a, f a solid billet, a solid chunk of metal, and it's uh, they eat away everything you don't need. So it's subtractive manufacturing. It's quite a bit more expensive than 3D printing. Copper 220, titanium 305, mild steel is pretty cheap at 42. We're going to stay with aluminum. So let's go back to the aluminum. Now, when to actually sub, uh, submit a request, of course, you might as well go ahead and sign in at that point. Um, you know, make up a, a name and sign in and all that, because they're going to have to be able to send you an email telling you that the uh, price request quote is in. And uh, I've got that written down here. So in the case of this, it was just a single part. And like I say, here it was saying 4266, but we know that's not going to be correct. An actual engineer has to look at the files. They have to determine the size of the amount of material. They have to start with the billet. They have to start with the amount of time that it's going to take for someone to enter 
all the CNC information into their computers, the time that it takes to set up the CNC machine, have it do the job, and they move on to the next one. Now, setting all that up to do one part is never going to be cost effective. All that time spent making those spent uh, making those decisions is is money. So if you order more parts, the price is going to go down. So this one part here in my hand would have been uh, basically seventy dollars. Plus you're going to have shipping on that. But I've covered that in the other videos. When you get into the shipping section, you can make different choices, whether you want the thing in a couple of days or whether you can go ahead and wait two weeks, which is normally the very least expensive way to, to get something. And it's fine for me. I've got more time than I do money. Now, had I ordered 10 of these, it would have broken down to $50 each and changed, like $50 and three cents or something like that. So it's quite a quite a generous drop from the $70.41 that this was in a single. But you can see even if at the quantity of 10, 50 is still higher than than this automated system saying 4266. So all I'm saying is the automated system doesn't really have any value other than letting you select different materials or different finishes, you know, things like that. Because then you can comparatively see what's going to cost more and what's going to cost less if money is your main criteria. I'll put a link to uh, PCBWay down below in case you end up needing some machining done, some CNC work. Just make sure that whatever uh, whatever program you're using to design your part will output one of the accepted files that they had up there. Step would be the best because that's pretty much accepted by everybody. Because then you can get quotes from other places if you want. And um, run it through a quote. It costs nothing to uh, get the quote done. You're not going to pay any money up front. And they stay by their they stand by their price. Once they've given you a quote, that's, that's what they're going to do. But they, you can see they just did an excellent job. I mean, it isn't the part that I wanted in the end, but that's not their fault. <laughs> that's because I'm using Design Spark Mechanical and I'm too cheap to pay for the next tier up version that would allow me to output a step file of that design. So this is the one I ran with just so we could find out what the quality would be like and what the pricing would be like and how quickly they could turn it around and, and they they could make the part in just a few days um, that isn't a problem and again I normally go with the cheaper shipping just to save money so there you have it I'll put some links down below to some of the other projects if you watch my channel you'll know that I've had them do uh, the crystal clear 3d printing on the body for my uh, KD uh, 270 robot. I've done uh, 3D aluminum metal printing with them on cages for my time machine. I've had them do some uh, just regular resin 3D printing. It was a kind of a semi-flexible material just to see how that would go. And I've also had them do uh, printed circuit boards which you can tell by the name PCB Way is what they uh, normally get into. If we go back to the home page that's the first thing that's going to pop up. They'll do all kinds of printed circuit boards, five bucks for the first ten pieces, one to two layer build time in 24 hours and stuff like that. So they do all kinds of things and you can go across here and you can find a lot of the different things that they do. They even have a module store where they sell a lot of um, products there. Um, they have shared products where people have designed things that are willing to share that in case they want to you want to build their project or something like that. Uh, poke around the, the whole thing. There's all kinds of interesting information on the website, PCB Way. Link in the description down below.